Welcome back to Healing Wars of Bethsaida. My name is Michael. I pray, Lord, that the words that I speak will be your words. And that they'll be able to hear, hear, hear and be healed. I'm trying to say heal and hear at the same time. <laughs> that was weird. <clears throat> so anyways, I start off with a dream. And the dream, I'm kind of like going down a certain path in life or whatever and they're like mermaids and stuff like that and being chased by cops and trying to get stuff or whatever and I'm like I get to the point where it's like I don't want to go down this life I don't want to go down this life so I'm like okay I gotta make a change and I'm basically I don't know why I have this white hard drive and I'm Tearing it open, it kind of becomes a book or whatever. Maybe that's not so significant right now, but maybe someone else can pick that up. But as I'm going about, I'm like, okay, as change, as everything's going to be starting to change, I'm going to end up, I'm going to go to where the college is, or this room where the college was, so I can at least obtain some of the stuff um, when everything changes over. And this one person's like, you know, it's going to cost you. You're going to get a late start in life. And saying that, it's like, yeah, I was bummed about having to pay the cost of that. And paying the cost of all that. But I, sur I soon changed being, from being bummed to being happy. And it's basically saying, I was saying, it's like, at least as I'm able to walk righteously before the Lord. Now, granted, our righteousness is of the Lord. So that's not exactly what I'm saying, like, oh, my righteousness. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying at least I was able to wor walk righteously before the Lord. You know, in right standing, are you right before the Lord? Is the question. And... You know, it's like, I, if, for those that do know me, I've kind of gotten a lot of late starts in life. Um, whether it's like understanding, dealing with the opposite sex. Uh, for me, I'm being, moving out of my parents' house until I'm at least over 40. Just getting my first place, over 40. I basically was in the same place for over 40 years. Yeah, I got a late start in life. But, at least, the Lord was letting me know, is like, at least you were able to walk righteously before me. And, um, Luke chapter 14, starting at 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and his children and brother and sister... Yet his own life, also, he cannot be my disciple. You know, a lot of people, they want to get their life started right off the bat. Kind of saying to me, in a sense, like, your cost was getting a late start in life to be, to be able to walk righteously before me. Now, I don't know what your cost is going to be to walk righteously before the Lord. That's going to be, maybe you have to walk with a limp. Maybe it's, you know, maybe half your brain's not going to be able to work functionally correctly for a time in a season. Maybe you're going to be despised by everybody. Maybe that's going to be your cost to be able to walk righteously before the Lord. You know, I think a lot of times we all have that certain cost. And not everybody has to pay that same cost. And whoever so does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. A lot of times we want to come after this, we want to go after that. But he's saying, cannot be my disciple. Alright, so I want to point out something here about a uh, disciple. Before um, the word Christian came along, the way you knew that someone was of Christ was they said they were a disciple of Christ. And that means learning from Christ, from Jesus himself. It's not just in name only, okay? So, 
But <clears throat> for which of you intending to build the tower sit it not down first and count the cost, whether he has sufficiency to finish it? Or uh, do you count the cost? Do you have what it cut? Are you willing to pay the cost to walk righteously before the Lord? And some people are not willing to. Some people have never even counted the cost of what it means to walk righteously before the Lord and to be his disciple. That's what it means to be saved. It's not just being saying, oh, I'm a Christian, but it's about being a disciple of Christ is what it means to be a Christian because that was what the name came to mean. But remember, it was back in Acts that it was talked about, you know, they were disciples of Christ. That's how they knew they were uh, of Christ. It wasn't just by name. It was by, by being a disciple. And many people that do know me know I did get a late start in life. So I just want to encourage you. Sometimes not everybody's going to have to pay the same cry, pay the same cost. <laughs> Some people are going to have to pay a different kind of cost than what I've had to pay to walk righteously before the Lord. And my righteousness isn't of me, but of Christ. Okay. I'm his disciple. So anyways, I'm praying that this helps somebody out there. And remember, sometimes the cost to walk righteously before the Lord does cost. I'm just thinking of the uh, ten virgins. You know, five of them, they had their oil spilled. But they told the other five, the foolish ones, go buy from the merchants. And now here's the question I have for you. Those five wise virgins, they had already paid the cost to get their oil spilled. They already paid the cost, didn't they? And what Jesus is saying is like every man's got to pay for it themselves. They cannot pay for you. And that's the lesson to take away. You got to pay for it yourself. You can't rely on everybody else around you. When it comes to you and God, and when you're standing before the Lord, it's not everybody else that's going to be able to support you. It's between you and Him. So count the cost. Are you willing to pay the cost? Or are you going to be like the foolish versions that didn't get the oil filled up? I pray that you're willing to walk righteously before the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.